Welcome, I'm Sam. I'm Tulsi. And we are Soma Yoga Life. And we're so excited to have all of you join us for yet another Conscious Conversations. And we're very excited today. We have a wonderful guest who is doing Isha Yoga in an interesting part of the world. Yeah, so uh, maybe many of you have heard of uh, the Isha Yoga teachers in uh, India or in the US. Um, we ourselves have traveled to both these countries and taught there. Um, but very rarely do we hear of uh, yoga in Africa. And it's really exciting to know that there's so much going on. Not only is there uh, a group of Hatha Yoga teachers sharing the ancient science of yoga and the wisdom of it um, throughout the continent, but also uh, there's an amazing school designed and uh, inspired by Sadhguru, um, which has a very unique model and is doing great things. So we were really excited to learn about it recently and to hear more about, you know, really what's going on there and how it's supporting people uh, in the rural communities in Africa. But also um, just to hear more about um, how these, these, this beautiful way of life and the impact of yoga can touch so many in all these different parts of the world. So we're so inspired and excited to share with you today uh, our guest, Chani, who has her brand called Leela Yoga Lifestyle. And she's joining us today from Nairobi. So without further Let's ado, we're going to bring Chani in. I hope uh, you're here, Chani. Excited to have you. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, guys. How, How are, are you, Chani? Good. Nice to see both on face, on live. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. It's I so know. nice to see you, too. You have such a beautiful yes. green behind you. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're real. And they're beautiful. So yes, I'm, that's lovely. I mean, the <laughs> yeah, this is where I do my yoga things. So it's oh. my sanctuary of sorts. That's lovely. Nice. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So uh, Chani, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us like where you started off. I know you grew up in, in a specific part of Africa and not everybody knows like Nairobi and Kenya. So maybe you can give us a little bit of a uh, a geography lesson as well and, and also tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up there and how yoga came into your life. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Nairobi and um, then when I um, was, I finished my high school, I went off to South Africa. So I lived in um, Cape Town. I don't know, have you guys ever been to Cape Town? I've been to Zimbabwe but I haven't been that in yeah. that area, no. Unfortunately, okay. I have yet to make it to Africa, but it's yeah. gonna happen. It's it's so it's it's one of the most stunning cities in Africa, I think. And I was doing my um, university there, where I was studying Buddhism in my postgraduate, and I studied uh, the Buddhist mind from a very technical, philosophical process. So more than the practice, the theory came first, and then meditation happened. And then meditation was really in so many ways the um, gates flooding open. So um, yeah, I think vipassana. I don't know how many um, have you guys heard of vipassana. I don't know. If yeah, you know many of my friends have done vipassana meditation. Yeah, so so I found so many similarities um, between vipassana and then arriving into samyama. Of course, it's also very different, but uh, so powerful. Um, and then that was like just turning everything um, into an internal experience. The awareness of just um, becoming more aware of what is happening inside. And um, yeah, and then I went backpacking around South America. Uh, and it was actually in Peru, in the Amazon jungle, where uh, I came across yoga. Really? So there was all this meditation, but no experience of yoga. 
and not yoga like how you go and bend your body and feel really great physically but that entire explosion of energy which happens which is so hard to describe um, and hence straight after that Sadhguru walks in he came to Kenya for the first ever um, international day of yoga tour um, in Africa so he was visiting Nairobi um, South Africa Johannesburg and Uganda um, in Kampala and in Dali so I met him and then that was uh, just you know when the student is ready the master will appear it was completely one of those <laughs> yeah but living in That's Africa, amazing. In Kenya, yeah, living in Kenya, it's so different here. Like I grew up ethnically Indian, so it's small part. It's a small community in the vaster population and size and demographic of Nairobi. Um, East Africa is so different from South Africa, which is so culturally, uh, topographically, in every way possible, so different from West Africa. Mm. So um, the East is a concentration of Kenya, Nairobi and all around uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. Yeah, you guys just need to come. Yes, and we really do. Oh, we're <laughs> waiting really to return to Africa. Really and yeah, when, we do, I, when we come back, we're going to go on a wildlife safari with you. It'll be so yeah, fun. Yeah, 100%. And <laughs> it's a dream. It's actually a dream of so many people here to have yoga in the wild safaris because there's so many beautiful properties and all. Um, but it wasn't always like that. I think growing up, the I really, I grew up and I think there was just not so much awareness of yoga and mm. yoga was something that old, old people did and women and mothers who were free in the mornings went to do some yoga and it was so brushed off and it was just looked as this physical thing that you do and there was no real understanding or experience of the people around you inspiring you that yoga is amazing and uh, initially I started to see uh, especially that only um, girls do yoga that was quite a yeah. strong approach yeah. which I heard but I can see that changing now and initially it was the older people that were interested in um, coming to my classes but what the difference was when I grew up only ladies did it but now these practices were more attractive to younger people and they were being challenged physically and they're seeking so they're also uh, uh, they just don't know what's happening but something beautiful starts to happen within so yeah so um, i'm curious about that like you went through this whole training process you became an isha yoga teacher and like what is it like coming back to africa and trying to introduce it to people there like what was yeah. your, the initial reaction maybe what did you have to you know think about as the way you would put it out yeah so first of all um I was so sucked in, I was so drawn to what Sadhguru was about that I just wanted to do the training for myself. Mm -hmm. So like I just, I, I'm reflecting now and I remember I had done no research about yoga in Nairobi. I just went for the training because I knew the training was what I needed. So when I came back, it was actually starting to map out the city and the different kinds of yoga studios, styles, teachers mm -hmm. which have uh, spaces or what is the yoga scene? And Isha is so specific, and in Isha you can't um, you can't just introduce a one flow. It's it's a, the approach is just something totally different. Nobody else here was doing it, so it's great to have that um, that we have this here now. But doing it on my own, it's 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 been an absolutely wonderful journey. Um, but there's not so much awareness of Isha yet here, and I think yeah. that's slowly coming. Yeah, there's even stigma in Africa around yoga, which really surprised me. But th there's just a significant lack of awareness. Um, I'll go as far as to say there was a time that we were doing a retreat in Uganda. And we were in some of the remoter parts of the country. And we were going to hold yoga sessions for um, just upa yoga to introduce them to what yoga is. And many had this be uh, belief before that Yoga is about devil worship. Or really? It's, it's about praying. So <laughs> you see that um, it's, it's so different with, with the conversations about yoga are when you're in the world of yoga and then outside where there's just like ignorance. Mm -hmm. So significant awareness needs to come. But those that have found their way to Isha and Isha yoga, 
uh, it's always a wonderful story. They're somehow touched by um, what Sadhguru offers, and sometimes it's just a YouTube video. But um, yeah, he is, you know, Isha is <laughs> the style, the entire way everything is designed, the attention to detail, uh, how people are put right at the center of an experience. There's mm -hmm. nothing like it. Yeah. So, it's nice to be the only one to offer Isha Yoga here, but I wish I had more support in terms of teachers because I was We're coming as soon as the lockdown sure. ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have so much space for you. So um, I think that I, I there's so much more to be done, but because I'm alone, I feel sometimes I can't do as much as I want to do. So I think I'm doing the best I can, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for all that you're doing there on your own. I mean, it's there's so much to be done to share this wisdom with many, yeah. many, even in places where they have awareness of it, there's more work to be done. So I can't imagine like on your own, you're just trying to share something that's touched your life in such yeah. a profound way. Yeah. Um, but I think you also brought in another point, which is, you know, when we get stuck in these confines of what we understand as religion today um, you know there's yeah. a close mindedness that sometimes can come with that and so often we don't realize like the, actually the history of yoga it predates all religion and is beyond religion and it can include even your religion because it's that vast um, so um, even in India where we have like so many different uh, religious ways all in a big melting pot you know even there, yoga can get lost sometimes or there's this confusion that yoga is related to Hinduism um, but yeah. Hinduism itself is not a religion either, you know, so... Just like Jainism. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, like, in some ways, like, I think the success of, like, workout yoga has been that it divorced itself completely from any of its history, in a sense, you know, it's like it, it isolated one little piece of it and took it out. But Lord sort of threw the baby out with the bathwater, it lost all of the genuine seeking and spirituality in the process. But maybe at least it sort of opened up a realm where people started not associating so directly yoga with, you know, gods and things they didn't understand, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. So, but now it's like, now the opportunity is there to sort of fuse it back together. And I, I think that's a, a lot of what attracted me and, and you, Tisha, and, and maybe yourself as well, is like, it's, it's bringing the real meat of yoga back, but it's not, it's not forcing like an entire culture on you necessarily to be able to experience it. Yeah. I, I just, I tell you, it's so hard to put in words, like it's the experience, yeah. it's so, it's so deep and it's so authentic and it's so raw that it's only through, when it happens to you, do you, do you get it, that essence of, um, so one of my friends, I'll just mention him now, Hansel, him and his wife, who's my best friend, took through Kriya and um, he completed, uh, I think it must be 111 days of Surya Kriya today and he's going for 300 days and um, he was watching your video uh, Tulsi, the one where you did six cycles of Surya Kriya which <laughs> were intent on finding your sadhana, right? and um, he's like, whoa because he's, he's starting to experience something and then he'll try to share his experience with me and he's just falling short of words to describe what is happening inside but I get it and you get it because you know what it's like so it's this entire language that we're speaking, which is so beyond words. And once you start to understand that communicating like that, I think it changes how you will respond in this world and how the, the image of yoga changes. Yes, the image, the objective, going back to the authenticity of it, but um, also how it's uh, reinvented. Um, it's still the same. It's still the same core essence, but every generation needs it to be packaged or repackaged in a certain way, which is off the times where people can right. relate. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, it's, it's such a huge challenge, right? And it, it must have always been such a huge challenge, which is like, yeah, how do you, how do you express and in, 
an internal experience that is so powerful. Yeah. How do you express it in a physical, external way that you know will allow people to eventually get there, but not make them have concrete ideas about it? I think Absolutely. it's maybe the most difficult puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. And we're yeah. all in this puzzle and together, trying yeah. to figure it out for the various <laughs> communities we work with around the world. Like, and for Sam and I, you know, before the lockdown, we were teaching in many different cities around the world. We have like communities in India, communities in New York, in in different parts of the U.S. And how to Wonderful. then translate translate that for that community and and make it yeah. available, make what yoga is available and and. Um, approachable to all these different sectors of society right yeah yeah wow yeah. you guys have had quite the adventure <laughs> yoga okay actually going back to your adventure i'm so amazed <laughs> that you found yoga in all these different parts of the world like what a testament oh, yeah. to yes. the history yeah. of of yoga and to think that you know the the history of yoga started with adi yogi the first yogi uh expounding this wisdom to these seven sages that then as the lore says went to different parts of the world and started uh that planted that seed in different parts of the world and you can see that very clearly in shamanic traditions of south america um that are so interwoven with the way that nature and the cosmos functions um and both within and around and i'm so curious like you know how your thirst for spirituality led you to these different parts of the world and led your journey here and there but also always bringing it into yoga deeper into yoga um so really really it was when i just started to surrender i think surrendering uh was a huge part of allowing myself to become understand what receptivity means mm. so um it was it was a it was a journey of surrendering and um there's certain experiences that happened very early in my life which helped me to build a very strong intuition the my thai massage guy was saying it's he's really sweet he doesn't speak much english but he's like heart um stomach is your center so if your stomach is okay then whole body is okay If your stomach is not okay, your whole body is not okay. And when I was in South America, the stomach region leading more up to the chest, which is Anahata really, is the center of this existence. So it was literally, I don't know if this sounds cliche or not, but opening up your heart and surrendering was guiding my intuition. It was completely intuitive um intent intuition that was guiding me. Mm. into it nature or i don't know there's been a guiding force and um it didn't it, it was sometimes and taking risks i think just taking major risks because i didn't want to go to south america with anyone i only wanted to go to south america with my own which is a sort of pilgrimage when you find yourself in the amazon jungle which is such a powerful and beautiful space to be in and a tarantula this big will just creep up on you oh. and you're just like oh my god <laughs> your house so um there were just things my heart opened up i i surrendered to the process of life and uh the intuition was guiding me and and then the isha yoga teacher training brought so much like shattered thoughts around me into deep state of understanding and it's great it all just came down to grace and living in grace which is me everything uh flow that's so beautiful. beautiful yeah it's wonderful to hear <laughs> yeah i, mean, I definitely was, relate really to what you're saying you know i think i think for a lot yeah, yeah i think for a lot of seekers it's that way that something inside of you is always looking for something so yeah. you're trying things out going different places cobbling things together from books and what th- different people have said and trying to weigh what's true and where it's coming from and all those things and like definitely in my experience like to, to finally find like a living master who's like just cutting yes. it you know clear yes. for you 
And especially in that training where you just get so, uh, you know, you get so immersed in every different aspect, you know, you get to hear him speak about. It just, it's like such a relief to get so much clarity, you know, yeah. both, both around the yeah. concepts and also of like what that experience that yeah. people are talking about means to you, means within you. Yeah, and I think it's such a profound thing to realize that all these things that you might have heard or read about or seen or like just like imagined, they actually can be real in your experience. Like that shift oh, yeah. was so huge for me. I I've, I've oh, yeah. heard about these like yogis meditating for days on end and like being lost, completely immersed in these states of ecstasy, like just dripping with it, you know. And I never imagined that that would be a possibility for me to even touch a glimpse of that, you know. But when I actually like experienced this for myself, and of course I may not have experienced it to that level, but whatever little bit I, I've experienced through the intensity of the practices and the consistency of the practices um, that Isha has offered me, even though I've done some form of yoga for my entire life, like I've never experienced it to this profundity and this depth. Like, wow, like being introduced to yoga in this way, like I am with you. I know, like, it's, I know. There's nothing to do but surrender. There's nothing to do but surrender to something yeah. this immense, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I see in the comments some beautiful stories of people's own journeys. Uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, how did you first find yoga? Pratibha says, I learned some basic yoga asanas with my parents when I was a kid. My father's friend is a yoga teacher and we used to go learn yoga for him in summer holidays. What a beautiful Isn't way to begin. Oh. Yeah. And then Neha says, my dad is asthmatic and still till date wakes up at 4.30 to do his practices. As a, as a child, I didn't find it very interesting. But as I grew older, I found I was falling into yoga and looking at yoga teachers and trying to heal myself. Beautiful. Yeah, Vivek is saying uh, that he got started through glimpses of videos of Osho and then reading books that changed all of it for him and gave him a huge understanding, which I can definitely relate to. Like initially, my whole experience of yoga was totally intellectual. I only just read books about it, but didn't have any inner experience of it. But that was definitely the inspiration and the impetus to go look for that experience. And then Swati is saying that she heard Sadhguru talking about what enlightenment is and that that was a slap in her face, she said. She'd never looked at life like that. And that was the starting point for her. So, I can, I can um, just see Tejas. I know Tejas. Uh, and he said yoga found him. And I think I can relate to that because, um, like I said, when the student is ready, the master will appear. And ready means thirsty and intense, but not right. the confused. And, you know, there's some kind of intensity that's holding all the confusion together. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it, it matters how much you want it. Because when you get it, that ability to hold the sacred sanctity of it is so much more. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. The biggest lesson of yoga is also patience. <laughs> I think the patience I have developed, wow. It's a project, it was actually an intention I made uh, growing up that I just knew if you can be patient, um, then really anything can happen. Uh, and whatever needs to happen will happen at the right time. And then Sadhguru brings it home really beautifully with Nandi, the large cow that sits outside Yanlinga, that she is the sign, the expression of eternal waiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the feminine, one, I think one of the feminine's finest qualities is patience. It's such a word, it's such a, it's such a thing to cultivate. Yeah. And I think also, especially in today's yeah. world, especially those who've grown up and lived oh, yeah. in big cities, like, you know, there's this whole go-getter mentality of like, I have to go and grab this thing and yeah. I have to go and yes. get it at the, uh, and make it mine, you know, to like move yeah. ahead in life or get successful in life or whatever. But the whole idea of this, just being able to be receptive to what is coming towards you, to opening yourself up to receive that thing. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful balance to this concept of this go-getter mentality. Yeah, you talked about like once you receive it, being able to hold it. And I think that's like a lot of the questions we get a lot on Instagram. It's like, okay, I learned this practice, but how do I keep it going? How do I hold it? I'm curious for you because you know, you're saying you're maybe you're within a culture that's not necessarily like 
100% supporting you down the spiritual path, as it would might be if you were living in the ashram or something like that. Um, so I'm curious, like, what do you do to like keep yourself supported, to like keep those practices sacred for yourself and keep yourself coming back to it, you know, not sort of getting pulled in the direction the outside world might want to take wow. you? That's a tough one, Sam. <laughs> oh my God, and that's so real. And I think that's the real challenge. I think so many, it's an internal dialogue every hot yogi has with himself. And we, I think, feel it on another layer. So I'm going to tone it down because I think hot yogis do it a little extra intensely. But <laughs> either way, I'm going to tone it down. But before that, I'm just going to say that the interest in yoga is really growing in Kenya. It's amazing the different kinds of beautiful teachers that have gone out and done beautiful different kinds of yoga and are bringing back. So the community is growing, which is nice. So I think minds are changing. So on the whole, I'm amazed at what's happening in the world of yoga here. But how do I keep coming back? Um, it's just, I know how good it makes me feel. and. And there's nothing else I found which gives me that. And like, I'm talking about like alcohol was a part of my life as a child, but not, I, I think it's poisonous. Any other form of coffee, you know, really good coffee. It feels amazing, but it still doesn't give me what my practices give me, which stays with me because I keep building. I can feel this source of energy I'm building, I'm building, I'm building, and the more receptive I have become through my practices, um, there's, it's just growing. There's something beautiful happening and you're aware. The awareness gets better. So it's the price I pay for enhancing my awareness. And, and remembering that makes me come back to my mat every single time and know and just hold it. Uh, I think the training and the way we are taught, the integrity of our teachers, um, my goodness, the, they're like up there. That's the, that's the threshold to measure the standard by. So it's such a high standard. Yeah. So you're already above the league, you know, once you enter the, 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 the real world. But I'm still figuring out how to like cut the distractions. I know the intensity of why I go. When I do, which happens, it's um, obviously there's something, you know, which, which just hits you from inside like, Oh, the training it's really in us you know um, but it, you have to let it go and then there's an internal dialogue but you make peace with it but there's so many distractions and I'll start with food <laughs> uh, the socializing and the amount of screen time my goodness <laughs> so so I sometimes I get it right sometimes I don't and yeah. I don't know what I need to do um, but how quickly is time passing by? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I feel you so much. You know, it's like, <laughs> there's one part of you that's like, I just want to lock myself in a room and do practices all the time. And <laughs> another part of you that's like, but I want to be a part of the world. I want to share. Exactly. And being part yeah. of the world means being on screens. It means maybe sometimes eating not exactly what I should be eating. <laughs> it means sometimes playing with compulsion a little bit, you know, testing the water with, and running away and testing the water awareness. again. So. Yeah, with more awareness. So yeah. that changes yeah. everything. Yeah, but I have to say like, even though these distractions come and go in, in and out of our lives and at various stages of our inner journey, like different, different compulsions may show up. I definitely feel like these practices have set this baseline of continuous growth and development, like even with any compulsion that may come in or if I feel like oh like why am I still attracted to this like certain thing that <laughs> is not helping me right like yeah even, yeah even with all of that I feel like wow I'm actually if I really think about it deeply I'm still way more aware than I ever was I'm still much yeah. more joyful than I ever was like these are the measures for me to like know that I'm progressing internally right like Am I able to be much more aware than I was before? Even if I'm still dealing with similar issues, like am I way more aware of them today? You know? Um, so for me, these are the, the measures that tell me that there is progress being made, even if it's little by little. Yeah. And honestly, I also have to say like, students, 
really inspired me to keep it going. Yes, you know oh my I mean? god. In some ways, yeah. when you're learning it, you're like the most fierce about it at that time when you're learning. Mm -hmm. And to like, again, relive through other people's experience that learning of the practices is actually really like usually wonderful for me. Yeah, and it's such an inspiration to stay connected with people who are uh, experiencing the power of it for the first time or sort of like blossoming with that and to, to witness that and to be a part of that is such a privilege. And I'm sure that you've experienced that. And Chandni, we have a, quite a few students of yours on this uh, yeah, conversation today just, sharing their hearts like yeah, and love yeah. towards you it's so beautiful <laughs> yeah i think our community here is small but um the kinds of things i have seen happen through this teaching journey is oh my god it's like the expression of instant gratification and just this feeling of fullness and um i think i've learned so much about the human condition mm. and just from how a person can sit really they can sit and they'll come to my class with their eyes closed on the first day having no idea what they're getting themselves into but somehow the courage has brought them there and then slowly through the sessions when you come to the final session and they have to attempt to create on their own <laughs> and this transformation you get to see right just it doesn't get old it just stays beautiful and, and the ability to hold space. And I must like once again, shout out to Sadhguru because creating an atmosphere and understanding the importance of the kind of environment, atmosphere you create for something beautiful to happen mm -hmm. through it, it is important in every yeah. aspect of life. Absolutely. I, we have to take it to our classes, but it's something that just through the process is slowly moving into my whole life. Mm -hmm. Just being able to create and live in sacred spaces, whatever that means to you. Hence, this little shrine, I tell you, it's a, it's a work of art in the making. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And I'm so glad you're, st you're starting to share more about a little bit about your experience of teaching. We're so curious yeah. to know about your experience of teaching at the Sadhguru school and tell us a little bit about what that is for those who don't know or maybe hearing about it for the first time. Yeah, so um, we, the Sadhguru school is this beautiful school which is um, tucked away uh, almost like a sacred sanctuary. I'm not joking, the lakes around and it's around hills, absolutely stunning um, rural part of um, Uganda. And um, it's it's got uh, four. Um, it's got kindergarten. Yeah, one, two, three, four, and I think five. And the kids are between three years old to about ten to eleven year olds. Uh, and every year the class increases. The class only, the school only opened up in 2016 when Sadhguru came himself to do the opening ceremony of it, and the kids got to meet him then. But these are little kids, they start at when they're very young and they all come from the homes which are around the area. But the model of education that Sadhguru school uses is, um, is taken from Isha Vidya's style of education. So there was one Isha volunteer, her name is Bliss. Um, she went to the ashram and she spent some time there and she was studying the Isha Vidya model of education, which is essentially about bringing rural children world-class education and quality education which will make them competitive in a world which is moving really fast right. and um and the lack of resources in rural africa are still very very real so um to have this possibility it's phenomenal and to see it like firsthand this was my real life experience of understanding how to gap the bridge of inequality because it's kids whose parents are farmers or house helps or they might be just working at home and um, money isn't like so available to these uh, people but still their kids are getting the same education as some of the kids of NGOs which are around the area and the expat community which tra travels from around the world who would pay up to two thousand dollars of a term of fees while a farmer or a somebody who is not able to afford the financial fee structure would pay $50 for mm. the for fees. So that gap 
is being bridged and i saw it happening so it was it was so wonderful um because here we just keep hearing of how the gap is getting wider and wider the inequality gap so this was a way of bridging it and um of course it's beautiful it's open it's designed to keep isha principles in mind that the entire experience of being in the um in the school is like a, a form of sadhana it's a process of giving how are you giving and oh my god when little kids are singing invocation at breakfast it it's just your heart will like melt <laughs> like, oh my god you know what so i'm going to share some videos I'm going to share some videos on my story from um, Please my do. Partner, some of the things and to watch kids um so the older groups they start to learn surya shakti and angamardana there's tanamai and yogesh which are from previous batches they're there um and they are doing an amazing job with the kids because the kids are not easy you know kids aren't like old like adults where they will <laughs> like hold their composure even though they're suffering internally especially when they've never moved their bodies and then they try to do <laughs> balak and it just won't happen for them <laughs> so um kids don't hold back like the kid has to do is uh, one kid i still i won't forget him he was so naughty um you have to do directional movement of your arms for example and he doesn't want to do his practice so he'll just loudly start yawning and you're like <laughs> what is going on like no adult would ever dream to do that so <laughs> they're they're so innocent and they're so pure and they're so full of energy mm. um so you see this dynamism in their energy in one aspect of angamardana practice for example and then uh they do am chanting they do am chanting every day and when i when i went there we did it with sadguru's uh, guided voice so they got connected to his voice and i think it's the perfect reverberation for a child to imbibe and the kind of stillness yeah. the kind of experience of stillness which can come into a 7 8 9 or 10 year old it was so fascinating oh that's amazing yeah om chanting and you know it, it's it's so powerful it's so, yeah it is and the, i think the earlier you get access to it the more important and breathing i think they all like they all do nadi shuddhi so they do nadi shuddhi uh, alone it's part of their day that they'll come for a 40 minute yoga session each of the batches in different time slots but on their own they have to do a uh, nadi shuddhi and om chanting in the afternoons so one uh, student who's really eager wants to guide nadi shuddhi and om chanting so they've been taught how to please sit in either sadasana with your eyes closed <laughs> and palms facing upwards <laughs> so they keep the time and they do it together and oh my god it, it, i i just used to stare i just used to stand and stare and just go that what are these kids going to grow up and be like yeah, mm. that's amazing. who has that dynamic literally the expression of yoga the dynamism in action but the stillness within imagine you could engineer that in the in the, no. the earth where you begin the the better off you are right Everyone. how many kids are there at the school so i was there last year where there were 92 kids in total yeah but the school is growing as the kids go take the next year mm. so um the teaching staff is committed but like there's they can always use help and they're so amazing to anyone who wants to come volunteer and like They're so transparent in everything they do, the resources that they give these kids. So, um anyone who can help is so welcome. I will also share with you and also on my page and everywhere about the Sadhguru school. Uh because I think it's so worth going there uh and seeing another footprint of Isha in a very organic form. It's holding the essence of Isha, but it's adapted to the environment in which which it's in. So it's my dream to have a Isha school in Kenya someday. Yeah, That's lovely. That would be wonderful. Yeah, it's worth the investment. It's so worth it. Yeah. So that's so beautiful. So you were teaching hatha yoga to these students uh, in the school for about 3 months. Uh no, it was less than that because okay. I was only in a full in a fill in position. The, the teachers on the ground are Yogesh and Sanamai mm-hmm. but they were in India for the teacher upgrades 
by the way, isn't the upgrade such an amazing thing that we get? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like, the kind of support. I'm really missing it right now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really uh, I guess you would have met in person, because you would probably be at the ashram together right now. Yeah. Um, I was really looking forward to it. So they were at the um, upgrade last year. So mm -hmm. Lulu, who she she pretty much manages the situation on the ground and everything which runs each way, you know, the direction. She she's amazing. She's probably one of Sad one of Sadhguru School's super women. Um, she she um, asked, she didn't want the kids to have a break in their yoga because mm -hmm. they were going to be gone for a month. So she asked me to just fill in a position just temporarily because they wanted to keep the... It's so important for them uh, that they keep the yoga alive for the kids. And oh, another really good and funny story is, you know, some of the kids have met Sadhguru when he came for the opening of the school, but there's so many of them who haven't. So there's this essence of him, Sadhguru school, they say Sadhguru all the time. Uh, and then they, they watch videos, they hear his voice, uh, they have the picture, there's a sad, Sadhguru Sanadi and they're very eager every morning to go put their vibhuti, each one of them. <laughs> one, one little kid walks around with the vibhuti, giving all the kids and they'll go and make, one makes a little dot, one will go all the way up. <laughs> what do they think of what it is? Like how do they understand what vibhuti is or the sacred ashes? They, they just know you're supposed to put it here and some of them are too young to understand so you just like let them be and just follow the rules <laughs> but when the time is right they'll be explained to but they're so curious and they have so many questions and um, there was a Christmas party that was happening at the school and um, the headmistress Jane her husband he was the um, father Christmas and he came down and like had a whole Father Christmas show and they thought he was Sadhguru <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so cute! So, uh, oh, Sadhguru does look a little like Santa Claus, yes Oh, I'm hearing, oh, I'm hearing and, and it's so funny that that's what the little kids see is this like man, yeah Aww. And yeah, it's so innocent and like it was, I couldn't stop laughing. When I heard that's that. too good. That's, that's too story. funny. That is it's awesome. Really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but but they want him to come. Like I still remember, they ask me as you know, first they look up to you. Like they they give you the confidence to be the yogi goddess that you know you are, but aren't <laughs> there yet. <laughs> but they're like waiting. They're like. There's one time they were just being so difficult because they, their energies are different every day and sometimes they're like so it's too much energy and sometimes it's not and, and they're like I was like okay you have to do uh, something or something and then you, we can write letters to Sadhguru and tell him why he needs to come back to the school Aww. and they were so keen all of them wanted to write letters to Sadhguru telling him hello please come visit us <laughs> So cute, yeah. That's amazing. So they they need to see him, and we really want him to come here. <laughs> so I hope we're gonna be able to. Yeah, it. it yeah. Uh, we That's an amazing him. story. I love it. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Really it's it's different here because unlike India, or I think now even in the West. Um, we're, I'm the only teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the yeah. only Isha teacher. It, it, so, it, yeah, the experiences have been wonderful through this uh, community. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's so beautiful. And thank you again for the work that you're doing, sharing these drops of thank wisdom, you. not only to so many people in the whole continent, but especially to these children, these young, blossoming minds that are capable of taking it and growing it and evolving it in their lives in such a deep and profound way so thank you to you and the two other teachers Yogesh and Tanmayi who are like pouring their hearts and souls into the Sadhguru school and Chani on our call the a uh, couple weeks ago you mentioned that there was a way for us all to support the school and to contribute to the to the uh, happenings of the of the school can you tell us a little bit about how we can be of support to the Sadhguru school yeah so um, they have a go. Uh, they have a GoFundMe page. I hope it's a GoFundMe. Page. They have a page where they give you a whole breakdown 
of what it takes to put a, a child, which is through um, their their meals, because they get breakfast and lunch at the school every day. Um, and then there's again, Sadhguru School is a nonprofit, so they're not running like what commercial education has become like. Like literally everything, all the resources are going just to the kids, and also to growing the school. So what the school fees of a students you're at school will be like and all they give you a whole breakdown and then you can support financially which is always useful um especially now when i think that things are more like if you think you have it bad just remember that there are people who have it so much worse true so, very true uh they then they're also so welcoming to volunteering opportunities so you can give your time if you want uh, which might be difficult if you are not able to fly anywhere <laughs> which is really heartbreaking for me but um, there's that um, or financially so how can we do this may I share I um, it would be great if anybody wants they can get, get in touch with the Sadhguru School Instagram page I'm sure mm -hmm. Pragati Pragati is an Isha homeschool girl a beautiful young lady who is actually also at the Sadhguru School and she manages a lot of behind the scenes efforts to keep things going um, Isha Homeschool, isn't that another incredible? That's like um, a whole other amazing thing, and we're we're looking right? forward to having somebody yeah, from there share yeah. uh, unconscious conversations yeah. about the experience of going through that yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, like, I think oh God, an easy like way, that. an easy yeah. way for people who want to support uh, the Sadhguru School, can they just contact you and you can put them in touch with how? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what's the best way to contact you? Tell us that. Oh, um, you can uh, slide into my DMs. <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> easy. Perfect. So all of you, like, probably know about Chandni already on on her Instagram, or or like have found us right now through this through our Instagram. So on our story, you can easily find Chandni's page as well, Leela Yoga Lifestyle. And thank you so much for sharing your beautiful, yeah. bright, vibrant energy with us today, Chani. It's, really it's so it. refreshing to connect with you from across the globe mm -hmm. uh, through this like little screen. But to feel your energy <laughs> is like it I brightens know. up the whole space. So thank you. Yes, thank you so and, much. And we really, really enjoyed the conversation, and we should definitely do this again. Thank you, Tap. Wait, wait. I just have to tell you guys. Thank you. And I'm telling my students here about you. Actually, one of my students. Uh, Natasha, she's amazing. She's done a hundred plus days of Angamardana. Like, uh, yeah, I have some really amazing stories of what's happened here. Anyways, um, we we post uh, we hear, we see posts about Soma Yoga here, and um, your challenges are inspiring my students. And like, for everything you do, like. Great job, guys! And I think it's only in the last two, three years. Okay, old teachers don't kill me, but that the social media of Isha style of yoga is expanding. There just weren't enough teachers, and I wanted to do my training who were sharing their entire experience. So, um, thank you for taking it to the next level and taking so many of us along with you. Because this is the first time I'm sharing in front of the screen, and like you guys are such professional. <laughs> We're definitely not definitely professionals. Not <laughs> We're learning you, as we you go. Have a good and, start. Yeah, and so thank you so much me for so warm. You've been so welcoming and warm. So it's been so wonderful. Thank you. It's such a privilege, honestly, to, for us to connect with all of you, yeah. to connect with this beautiful community of, of growing community yeah. of spiritual seekers across the globe through this platform of Instagram. And we just feel blessed to to be on this yeah. journey with so many people and to like do our little bit to, to stay motivated, connected and to deepen our own uh, experience of life together. It's really very inspiring just to talk to all of you and hear all of your amazing stories. I mean, it's just like yeah. everyone is out there doing all these amazing things. And it's like, you yeah. know, if, if we can do one little bit to let other people also hear about it and we also get to hear about it, you know, yeah. it's great. Yeah. yeah. The win win for sure. Yeah. So thank you okay. so much for joining us and for all of you, uh, you know, even though Chandni is leaving right now, she'll be uh, available on Instagram and you can connect with her and, and talk to her more uh, about more of her experiences with uh, yoga in East Africa and at the Sadhguru School. And stay tuned because we have two special announcements coming right up. So thanks again, Chandni. Okay, Thank see you in Kenya. Yes, definitely. Yes. We love that. Yeah. <laughs>
So that was that was just that was, great. that was beautiful. Like as all of you can are experiencing, Chandni's energy is is just phenomenal, and uh, I'm sure she's doing great things, albeit on her own, uh, and just like spreading yoga like wildfire and wherever she goes. Africa. Yeah, I can't wait to visit her. So I know that you all have been uh, talking to us and sharing your ideas with us for months now um, on how we can share more of what we're doing with all of you and we've had almost 10 conscious conversations this is the this is the ninth one that we're having today so we have two very very special announcements coming up i'm so excited drum roll <laughs> so i know all of you have been wanting to see some of the past conscious conversations you've been asking us if you can uh, catch things that you've missed or uh, hear people's stories that you were so excited to hear and you've been waiting for us to share with you uh, glimpses of the past conscious conversations we've had and we are so excited to tell you yeah. that so we've put our very first conscious conversation up on YouTube so you can go to youtube.com so my yoga life and you can find the first conscious conversations there and we will continue to put them up uh -huh. as fast as i can edit we will put <laughs> them up um and uh definitely so go check out our youtube we would love to see you there and, and the link to... the link is in our bio so it's like the first link right there it's just our new youtube video so you can go check it out and share tell us in the comments what you think like this is our first like youtube conscious conversation so let us know how you feel and Tell us, give us feedback. Yeah, and uh, the YouTube channel will not just be for conscious conversations. We also have some other videos that uh, have been in the works for a while, actually, mm -hmm. and that we'll be excited to share with you soon. So definitely go and check it out. And uh, if you like this type of content, um, there'll be stuff that happens on YouTube that won't happen on Instagram. So definitely subscribe so that you can see it when it happens. Let's go.